Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Andrea from Coffee, Teach and Inspire. And today I'm going to show you two ways that you can make fonts on your iPad. So if you didn't know already, I make my own fonts. Currently I have two font packs out. I use Procreate and iFont Maker, which you will see today on this video to make my fonts. And I also name my fonts after things from the office because I've probably watched that like five times through already. It's my favorite show ever. And I know a lot of my followers like it too. Um, I do something unique and every time that I come out with a font, I let my followers choose the name. If they choose a name that I like or there's one that really stands out to me, then I send that person the my font pack for free. So it's just something fun for me to do to interact with my followers. So like I said, I use iFontMaker and Procreate to make my fonts. The main one that I use is iFontMaker. It's made for making fonts. And through Procreate, you'll see that I use Calligrapher and a template that they have to fill it out on Procreate and then I upload it back to Calligrapher. So what I'll be using in this video is an iPad, it's nothing special. It's not an iPad Pro or iPad Mini or Air or anything, just the iPad. And I have the Apple Pencil first generation. Make sure that you do your research and if you have just an iPad, you cannot get a second generation pencil. So just make sure you are purchasing an iPad and a stylus that is compatible with one another you do not need an apple pencil i recently purchased one and i truthfully do love it but prior to having an apple pencil i had a third party stylus from a donut so totally up to you so we are gonna use iFontMaker first since it's the one that is used for making fonts it is $7.99 in the app store and this is what it looks like so i'm gonna tap this and then once you're in there, you're gonna tap new. And the first thing that I want you to do is down here, click on this black line. There are different lines that you can use in iFont Maker. So just test them out, see which ones you like the best. We have some lines and some shapes. You can also um, undo, there's an undo button down here. You can also redo it. So if I wanted to keep that line, there's a redo button. So undo, redo. I generally stick with just this first one. You can also play around with the size. So if you wanna try that size or maybe see if it's smaller. So I can drag it, make it smaller. And then down here in these three lines, apply weight stroke to either current glyph or to all glyphs. So if I just apply it to the current one, it'll shrink it down. So if I want it back to 100, I can press apply stroke weight. I can also edit it. So down here, click on the arrow button and then I'm gonna click on this. So it gives me a bunch of different lines that I can edit and it wasn't the straightest. So the first thing that you can do is click on the boxes to move that up or down. That's what the little boxes do. So I'm going to move it up to this line. Now it's kind of curvy and I don't like it. So I'm going to drag this circle to change the angle of it. Do the same thing here. This box in the middle, again, you can move it, change the angle of it, whatever you like. I can also use this red box to make it bigger or smaller. I can also rotate it. You can do lots of things. That's what's really nice about iFont Maker is you can go in and actually edit and move and size the lines how you want it. I can also copy and paste. So if I click on the line, I can either press copy, delete, or outline. I'm gonna press copy and then down here where the scissors are, I'm gonna press paste. So there's another line and I can move it, do whatever I want with it. If I don't want it anymore, I can either undo or press delete. I can also, this is a really cool feature. I can copy all. So if I want an all uppercase font, I'm gonna come down here to the lowercase a and press paste. And there's the exact same a. 
I can also clear, which will clear everything. So we're gonna look more down here at this bar. So this one is where you're drawing your font. This is where you can edit it. This is a grid view. I don't really use it, so I'm not sure. I guess just don't use it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, here you can scale it. I like using this because see how this is just a little bit above? I can pinch and move it. So if I wanna edit the whole thing and I don't feel like going in and changing all the lines and making all the lines bigger, I can come down here to the cross and I can make it bigger, make it smaller. I can rotate it and do whatever I want to do with it. This layer button down here, I can adjust the lines. I usually don't do this, but this is, if you did want to, this is where you can do it. So I can move, I can make this in the middle. I can make the cap height different. But like I said, I usually don't mess around with that. I keep it as it is. But uh, one thing that you can do is, did you notice how there was an A in the background? Like here, let me go there. So there's a B and it's just for a guide. You don't, if you don't want it, you can turn it off by pressing none. Or if you have a, an example photo, you can add a photo, which is pretty cool, I think. All right, so this little button down here is next. You can also go back. You can also access any of the letters just by clicking on them. If you scroll down, there are lots of symbols. So here's just the basic Latin. Here's Latin accents even more so there is a ton of symbols that you can make if you wanted to if you want even more symbols come up here to the world button and you can turn on more symbols so if you wanted to do Japanese or Thai or whatever you wanted to do you could turn these on or off so if you don't plan on using the Latin symbols you can always turn the extensions off or on totally up to you all right, so one thing that I like to use iFontMaker for over Procreate is for making cursive. So cursive can be really tricky because it needs to connect. So let's do a B. And then the next thing that I do is I make the R because the R is the trickiest one for the letters to connect to. And you really honestly have to play around with it. So I'm gonna come up here. This is called the preview bar and you can type in whatever you want. So I'm gonna type in the lowercase b and r and here's the letter spacing. So they're spaced apart, but you can make them closer together like this. So see how it doesn't connect? I need to play around with it just a little bit. So I think that's as close as they're gonna get it for now. Um, so the, all the rest of them are gonna need to connect to the R like that. So what I like to do, my trick for doing cursive, is I'll draw just this ending line because I know that this line will connect to the R. Then I'm gonna come down here to edit, click this line. Oh, not that one. That one, press copy. Then I'm just gonna go to C and paste it. So C doesn't need to come all the way out. I'll show you. It doesn't need to come all the way out there, but it does need to end up here. So you can move this. And I'm gonna extend my C up into there. So it doesn't need to be the exact angle, but it needs to end at the same exact spot. So let's go back up to preview, type CR. There we go, it's pretty close. It's still gonna need edited, but I'm gonna continue doing that for all my letters. I'm just gonna continue doing that throughout the alphabet. The preview is also nice. So if I had more characters, I would come up here and I would do a panogram. So right now it would just show me the ones that I have. And again, you can ch um, change the letter spacing and the word spacing. 
You can also do numbers. I haven't done any numbers yet, but you can see a preview of the numbers. So I, once I'm done, obviously I'm not done with this, but you can press the send arrow. You can build a font poster and it'll give you a preview of what your poster will look like. You can save it, you can email it, you can do whatever you want with it. I usually don't do this step because I don't really need it, but this is totally a preference thing. When you're done with it, you're gonna press send, configure and build font. So this is what I like to do. I'll name it, I'll name it like CTI. So what I like to do, you don't need to do this, but I like to group my fonts if I'm going to send out a font pack. So um, my previous font pack, I made this color. So if this is going to be my font, my third font pack, maybe I'll do blue. You don't have to change the colors, but the option is there for you. Uh, you can put in your name. And I recommend saving it either as private or view only. I, in the past, I've accidentally saved it as private and hundreds of people have downloaded my fonts for free, which isn't ideal because you spend a lot of time and effort into your fonts. So view only or private. If you do view only, you can put either your website or your Instagram or your email. I'll just put my email. And then I'm gonna press build online. You can open it, copy it, install the font, download the desktop font, or delete it. So if you wanna come back and download it, click on the link and then download desktop font and save it to your files. Save. And then you can download it to your iPad. You can send it to your email to download on your computer, whatever you'd like to do. All right, the second way that we are going to create a font is through Procreate. So the first thing that you need to do is go to um, the internet and go to Calligrapher. So it's Calligrapher without the E and you can register for free. Okay, it does this a lot of times, so just press refresh, especially if you're using it on an iPad. So you're gonna press create template. And you need to add arbitrary characters. So come up here to the drop down menu and press basic Latin, and you can either add the characters that you want or I'm gonna go back and click these three buttons and press minimal English. And it'll automatically upload these 60 for you. And you can see that not all the symbols are there, so that's why you'd wanna go back in and click the arbitrary characters. The ones that you already have are grayed out. And so if I wanna add some more, if I wanna add numbers, I'm just gonna tap them. But I do want to say that the free account only lets you have 75 characters so you will not be able to do all of these characters and if that's fine with you then just do that i upgraded to the pro account and i can do 480 characters which obviously i don't need but it's i wanted to have all the characters especially since i sell my fonts i don't think it's professional to sell fonts without some of these um arbitrary characters all right, so then you'll press add. I'm gonna go back. Once you have all your characters, you're gonna press download template. You can either download it as a PDF or a PNG, totally up to you. It really doesn't matter either way. You can also change the size of the template cells. So if you want it bigger, slide it to the right. If you want it smaller, slide it to the left. I usually just keep it in the middle where it is. So the helplines are what iFontMaker has. It has the top, the bottom, and the baseline, I believe is what it is. And then you can also turn on the characters, like how iFontMaker had it, had that um, those letters in the background. I usually turn this off for Calligrapher, but again, totally your choice. And you're gonna press download. Okay, of course, good thing I already have one downloaded. So once you have it downloaded, hopefully you don't get an error message like me. I'm going to either go to files and here's my template. 
you're gonna have probably two of them depending on the size that you made your boxes. And up here, I'm gonna share it to Procreate. open procreate and there it is so I'm gonna start creating but again if you didn't watch my procreate video I will link it to this video one key takeaway even if you didn't watch the video is that you need to use layers when you're in procreate so click up here the layers and add a new one you will be so grateful that you, you use layers because a lot of times you need to go back and edit or erase something, make it bigger or smaller. When I did my first font through Calligrapher, I did everything on one layer on this layer. So when I went to erase it, it erased the background too. <laughs> so lesson learned, use layers. You can use whatever brush you want. I think that's the biggest pro about using Procreate is that you have so many brush styles to choose from. Flat brush. Make sure that you use a black. I really don't know what happened if you used another color. I don't know if it would work or not. I've never tried it. I'm not going to waste my time doing that, but you can fill in, zoom in and fill in your letters. If you don't like that, you can make it bigger. I would also recommend keeping the opacity up because it might not show up as well if your opacity is down. I like using Procreate because it has the quick draw, so I don't have to go back in and edit. I can just make a line and an arc. Oh, and again, I didn't use my layers. But if you didn't use your layers and you wanted to move this V, go up here to this, nope, this one, outline your V and you can move it to center it. So when you're done with both of your templates, you are going to save it as a PNG. This is really important because if you're uploading it back on to calligrapher through your iPad, you can only upload it as a PNG and not a PDF. If you wanted to save it as a PDF, you could, but you'd have to email it to yourself and upload it to calligrapher through your computer. I'm going to go back to calligrapher and up here, you're gonna to go to my fonts and there's another one, but I'm gonna press new font we're gonna give it a name. You can change the letter spacing, like how you did an iFont maker, the font size, the word spacing, all of that. I usually keep it the same. And then you're gonna press upload template. So you're gonna choose the file and then upload your picture. Well, let's pretend that it worked. We'll just go back to this font. And once it's uploaded, you are going to press build font. Again, you can change the names if you want and press build. I don't know what's going on with Calligrapher today, but usually it works and it'll upload a file for you. You'll save it to your files, just like you did an iFont maker and download it to your iPad, send it to your computer, whatever you wanted. Thank you so much for watching my video. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about making fonts and I would love to see any fonts that you create. Let me know if you have any other questions or anything that I can help you with. Sometimes calligrapher can be tricky and using it on a computer can be best. So you may need to send your files to your computer to then upload to Calligrapher because as you saw, it was giving me some issues with my iPad. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.